Uh, we're going to bring on Jess Phoenix. As I said, volcanologist, both kinds. I'm just going to go with her. Okay, she can disagree with me. But true. I mean, really, you are a Star Trek fan, Jess, and, and you are a volcanologist for real, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, true on both counts. There you go. Guilty as charged. Thank you for joining us. You're running in California District 25. Why? Uh, I'm running because uh, we're really lacking um, facts and evidence in our policymaking. <laughs> and it turns out authenticity in our uh, candidates and elected officials. So I really want to make sure that not only do we bring progressive values to our government, but we bring uh, different perspectives and we make sure that we are honoring uh, evidence based policies and uh, working every day to bring truth into government. That's awesome. That's awesome. But I hate to tell you that it's not just CD25. The evidence and science-based, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yep. We have so much work to do. Um, so is, what, is there a core issue for you? I, I'm going to go environment, but am I right? It's, it's sort of all connected. Uh, and it's hard to pick one thing, but I think if you had to underpin everything it, it kind of ties into education all the main points for me cool. because when you give people access to information and knowledge that's when you help them awaken to their own power and their own potential so if we have people educated uh, and that means good solid public school educations need to be accessible to everyone uh, and then we're supporting education that's going to take us through the 21st century and the problems that we have uh, so we're working on education for green tech and for cybersecurity and for dealing with the automation rise that we're seeing. Uh, and then we educate people on climate change. Uh, these things are how we're going to deal with these big picture problems that we're facing. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said education because really um, that's, that, that is the biggest problem is we have a lot of information out there, but we don't have a lot of people knowing which is fact and what's not and you know <laughs> what's really going on you i mean the fact that i, I hear people say flat earthers are real and then other people uh, are like no they're not I'm like yeah i think they are and that's frightening in today's world isn't it yes it's really um it's really disturbing and the amount of people who are good intelligent rational people who don't know how to separate fact from fiction is it's growing especially with the um, the 24 hour news cycle and news media that is increasingly controlled by the right wing, like we see with Sinclair, that's a massive problem because that's how a lot of people consume their news and they just take it as gospel when in reality, it's, uh, it definitely should be subject to much more scrutiny than it is. Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought up Sinclair because, um, uh, and what, what you're talking, I mean, that's why we started as Bernie 2016 TV is, is, you know, there's a narrative being pushed that they're, all their networks push to local uh, you know consumers and and that's it's often misleading or false the, you and i both know the climate change debate would not have been here had we just taken scientists word for it like 40 years ago right well yeah and if you didn't have the same sort of um, folks that are highlighted in the book merchants of doubt uh, the people who made the tobacco industry what it is and and right. de you know, defended it at all costs and the cost being people's lives uh, we're seeing those same uh, methods and tactics and some of the same players involved in pushing fossil fuels as that and that is an agenda and when in reality i mean come on you want to talk about fools um the gop leadership knows that climate change is real up to and including donald trump yeah. and it's just that i mean he put on the application for the seawall to protect one of his golf courses in scotland the reason they needed the seawall was because of sea level rise due to climate change yes. so it's just that he, I mean, they know it's real. They know it's inevitable um, and from certain perspectives, but they also know that if we did curb fossil fuel usage and emissions, that we would actually be able to get some traction on this. So they're really just scared of what will happen to their big donor buddies and, the, you know, the corporate lobbyists and everything. So it's a matter of removing the, the stranglehold that the corporate lobby wing has on our government. Absolutely. And, and, and I want to touch on that in a second. But I brought up this picture. Steve Knight is the guy, right? We need to get rid of here. He's kind of the fool. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. And he actually, to use his own words, um, Steve called um, California's preparations for climate change, quote unquote, foolish. And uh, so that's his word. But honestly, if you're not preparing for climate change, if you are not trying to get out ahead of this, then you're the fool. I, and that's where Steve is. I honestly, you know, and you know this living in your, especially in your, your particular district where it is, but uh, I mean, I would be frightened of, in California, of so many things. You've got 
uh, earthquakes that are just there. Um, you're a desert climate that's lacking water. Your seasons have now completely shifted. You have year round fire season. And I mean, what you got fracking, you're fracking. I don't understand how that, it, 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 how can you frack a, a, on a fault line? It just doesn't make any sense. And Steve is the person who was tied in with the fossil fuel industry, correct? Very. Chevron is one of his, I think, top three donors last year. So it uh, it just goes to show you that um, people go where the money tells them to go. And, uh, you know, it, we do not need to be fracking where there are faults. And we are not entirely sure where there are faults. I mean, look what's happening in Oklahoma. There's an old seismic area that people know has had earthquakes, you know, years and years ago when they went ahead and fracked anyway. And they're seeing tremendous amounts of earthquakes there. And that's not a good thing um, in our in California. We at least have building codes that things built after 1971 are built to a particular code uh, that is designed to minimize any sort of damage or casualty. It doesn't mean you're guaranteed to be safe. And my office, where I'm sitting right now in Palmdale, is about uh, two miles from the San Andreas Fault. I mean, I can point to where it is uh, outside of our building. And the, I mean, this whole area is subject to liquefaction. So these are things, these are very real dangers. Wildfires are a huge thing for us. And, you know, obviously earthquakes aren't going to be impacted by climate change, uh, but the intensity and the frequency of wildfires very much can be. And, you know, the climate change is going to see us tapping more into our aquifers and we already have subsidence, which means the ground is actually sinking due to how much water we're pulling out of the subsurface. Wow. Uh, that's just north of here. And we're going to see more and more of that uh, as we use more and more resources, but we don't innovate. So that's why I'm really pushing the education for the future and the innovation, the investment in green technology. That's what we need. And it, it is you know, aerospace is huge here, too, but we have a long history of manufacturing and production in the aerospace industry. So let's also marry that to cyber and to green tech. And then we can be a, the real innovators of the 21st century. I mean, we can make that happen. That's brilliant because it is all it, it's the intersectionality of all of those things. Steve and Jaffe brought it up before, but it's really true. You want to fix the education issue. Well, let's retrain on new jobs. You want to fix the climate issue. Well, let's retool for renewable energy. And you want to fix the job issue. Give these people those jobs. Right. It's kind of yep. it all comes around. And it's, it's not just academic either. Right. Like we need education in the vocations as well. Right. And, and we need to be telling people that it is these are very worthwhile positions to go into. Um, you know, I lived in Australia for a bit and in Australia, the tradespeople are very well respected there. And we need to have that in the United States because we need people who can make things and create things um, in the real world as well as in the virtual one. I mean, that's that's how we're going to all work together to solve these problems. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. And, and honestly, for me, it's so exciting to have people in science um, running, um, especially women in science, because we got too many men in government and we got too many men that just don't, even, even though they may understand it's true, they don't care about science. They don't care about these things. And, and we need people that are fascinated and care about this stuff in office, you know? Yes. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is we are, I tell everybody this, is that, you know, we are all born as scientists. Uh, when we are yes. little kids, we are going out, we are putting things in our mouths, we are crawling around, we're touching things, you know, we're grabbing the dog um, or whatever it is. <laughs> and, and those sort of, you ask a question in your mind, like, is this going to taste good? Can I crawl up these stairs or right. whatever it is? And it's that hypothesis testing and the curiosity about the world around us and how we move through it. That's what we need to protect and preserve and encourage. And that's why education is so important, because if we retain that curiosity throughout our whole lives, we're going to have a much better off society because we have a society of inquisitive adults who are open to new information. And uh, that's how we solve problems. <laughs> yes. Critical thinking skills. We're lacking that. It's Very so, much. So true. You're awesome. Tell everybody where you're going to be. I know you're out on the road all the time. Where are you going to be next? Where can they find you? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so there's a lot of places. Uh, the <laughs> easiest thing for people to do is to visit my website because we have an events page. Um, I do a lot of events in the community. So Sweet. a lot of events at restaurants or at um, little private house parties um, and then things at bookstores and libraries. So if you go to Jess2018.com slash events that's the events page and we update it every week so it should be up to date with all of the latest and greatest and my schedule is pretty packed this week so i actually don't know where my next event is but go to the events page on the website because then you can figure out where to catch up with me in person and people can always um, check out the website or twitter or facebook to get me online awesome thank you so much jess phoenix for joining us is that and just before we go is that a picture of your husband in the bottom there i think that is 
Yes, that's that's yesterday. That's uh, so on the the guy with the sunglasses and I, uh, you know, we're there with our dog Titan. We were out in uh, Lancaster, which is here in our district, and uh, it's just north of where our office is. And they had an Easter egg extravaganza, and it had, of course, egg in it. Of course, but, uh, they had uh, you know jumpers for the kids or bounce castles. Uh, you know, they had all those. They had they had funnel cakes. So I had an amazing funnel cake yesterday. Nice. And uh, it, it was just a great day. It was so beautiful, and the weather was perfect. So that's that's him. That's Carlos. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, and he's been uh, helping you on your campaign. And, and it's just I just want to point that out because so many and you've mentioned him on Twitter and, and other social because so many of our spouses and, and significant others are, 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 you know, our campaign managers or our tax or whatever they are in the campaign. And I, I know that Carlos has been helping you out a lot. So yeah, I mean, he's fantastic. I could not do this without his support. And I mean, anybody who tells you that it's, you know, it's all about the candidate, they're completely wrong. It's about the staff that you have, the friends that you have, the family that you have. Those are the people who pick you up and carry you when you're like, oh my gosh, this is so difficult. Or look at all these trolls or, you know, wow, the hours are really long. They're the people who help um, distribute the burden a little bit more evenly. And that's why grassroots movements are so, uh, they're so fun and they're the future. It's because it's got to be spread amongst everybody. And that's how you get people engaged and excited. That's such a great point. The more people you talk to, the more hands you touch, the more trust you've got, and the more they're willing to work with you. Yeah. You know? And your job is to represent people, not faceless corporations. And, you know, that's that's the big thing. So that's why I love going out and, and talking to people. And little Titan, he got so many little kids yesterday who were just like, oh, my God, I want to pet your dog. So, hey, you know what? It's uh, people and animals can get in on the action. There you go. So awesome. Jess Phoenix, thank you so much for running in Congressional, Congressional mm-hmm. District 25 in California. I appreciate it, John. Thanks for having me yet again. It's, it's awesome to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much.